Imagine you're from the Deep South, from Sweet Home Alabama. You catch on to the strong racing culture at a young age and grow a passion for the motorsport. You spend a decade taking whatever ARCA or truck opportunity you can get, big or small. Whatever will further you up the competitive ladder. Of course, there are hardships along the way and some successes in an ARCA championship, but finally, in your mid-30s, your NASCAR career begins to take off. You win at the World Center of Racing to start the season. You get a clutch win to advance to the championship race in trucks. And without a balls-to-the-walls effort by a competitor, there's a very good chance you end the season as champion. Still, most of the drivers that are your very same age are either racing late models at their local short tracks or are out of racing entirely. Meanwhile, you're in your prime racing for a NASCAR championship. 105 days, however, instead of the gear shift being within arm's reach and racing at speeds over 200 miles per hour, you have a beer in a remote. You're watching your very truck race at Daytona from your living room sofa. Even worse, you have to split seat time with a driver that underachieved in a top tier truck the year before. The person I just described to you is Grant Enfinger. Probably the most underrated story of the NASCAR offseason was a four time winner in 2020 and championship finalist in trucks losing his full time ride. On the surface, I'm sure everyone knows just why Enfinger isn't out there racing for a championship. Yet, when you go past the tip of the iceberg, there is much more to the story that meets the eye. So this story starts out with an unusually busy off-season for Thorsport Racing. When you look at its recent history, it is very rare for Thorsport to make any changes and nonetheless wholesale moves that affect every single truck on the team. In fact, Bob Pockris reported on November 20th that Thorsport planned to have the exact same driver lineup. It was also projected that the Crucci pairings would remain the same, with the Matt Crafton Jr. Joyner and Johnny Sauter Joe Shear championship pairings remaining intact. I'm telling you, considering the Sauter and Shear tensions at the end of 2020, Duke Thorson must have had a hell of a milk and cookies conversation to keep them together. Now, as for Enfinger and Ben Rhodes, both of their crew were also expected to return until they were suddenly confirmed to different teams. Matt Noyce went to Bill McNally Racing and Jeff Hensley went to the greener pastures of GMS. Now, Hensley, in fact, was a very important part of Enfinger's success, including all five of his wins at Thorsport and the 2019 regular season championship. His departure, in my opinion, was a massive blow to the 98 team. Now, as for the 99, they're on track to win 22 races this year. And I'm telling you, if they keep that pace, Ben Rhodes, Rich Lucius, they will be unanimous first ballot Hall of Famers by the end of the year. I guarantee it. Thorsport would also end up parting ways with Ford. That led to a reunion with Toyota, the very manufacturer that got them their first two drivers' championships in 2013 and 2014. So now that they're under the Toyota umbrella, it was announced that 20-year-old Christian Eckes would drive for the team on a part-time basis. This was a driver right here that finished roughly six positions worse than his average start in 2020, the worst differential amongst the 18 drivers that ran every single race. Considering the consistency he showcased during his ARCA championship in 2019, I honestly think he's the biggest bust for KBM that I can remember. Hiring Eckes was far and large a bad decision from a statistics point of view, but it would get much, much worse. Grant Enfinger, far and away the best driver on Thor Sport last season, is now officially a part-time driver. He will do 12 races for the team, while Eckes will do the remaining 10. Jerry and Prince, Crafton's truck chief meanwhile, will become the new crew chief for the 98 truck. And honestly, when I look at this move, this wasn't just a slap in the face to Enfinger, but a sucker punch to the head. A nasty black eye to Enfinger's career, and you can also say Thor Sport, since their odds at the championship decreased by 25%. So if you want the short answer as to why Enfinger got the demotion, it's very simple, and that's of course money. In a pandemic that has restricted social interactions, it has costed the truck series millions in at-the-track revenue. Many race teams have seen sponsorships decrease their involvement with the team, which is no exception for Enfinger in this case. His primary sponsor, Champion Power Equipment, cut their sponsorship to seven races, down from 11 in 2020. Grant Enfinger stated, in reaction to this move, there is so much stuff that is in our control and so much that isn't. It's a tough time right now to put all these deals together and go racing. 
Now what Enfinger said is largely true about the landscape of NASCAR. However, when I look at the 2021 truck field, Thor Sports seems to be the only team that made such a move. Small multi-truck operations such as Nice and Young's Motorsports seem almost unbothered from the pandemic in terms of their entries and full-time rosters. And then in terms of the big dogs, GMS in fact expanded to five truck teams even as Sheldon Creed took to the track last Friday in an unsponsored Silverado. So why couldn't Duke and Ronda Thorson just cut their losses and commit to a full season of Endfinger out of their own pockets? And this is where you have to take geographical location into account in operating a race team, especially after a downer year. Every single full-time truck operation is located in North Carolina, with the exception of two. Bill McNally Racing is headquartered in Roseville, California. However, they don't operate the truck team in the Golden State. Instead, the 19 truck is housed and worked on in the hit toy shop in Mooresville. The other team is Thorsport Racing, located on 312 Thorsport Way in Sandusky, Ohio. Being a NASCAR team outside of North Carolina has its major challenges, including travel and even driver accessibility. However, when it comes to the race team and the mechanics behind it, far and large, the biggest disadvantage to operating outside the Tar Heel State is definitely the taxes. When you look at the 2021 State Business Tax Climate Index rankings, North Carolina is the 10th best state to own and operate a business. The state also boasts a 3% corporate income tax, which is the lowest in the nation. Now, compare that to Ohio, which actually doesn't have a corporate income tax. Rather, they use gross receipts, so it's much harder to get a percent Thorsport is paying versus competitors. However, if the climate index is any indication, Ohio is the ninth worst state in the entire nation when it comes to corporate taxes. I'm telling you, if I had to calculate just how much money Thorsport could be saving if they were in North Carolina, I'm pretty confident my TI-30X right here would freeze up. When you look at it from that standpoint, while GMS and KBM are investing more money in the team, Thorsport is paying corporate taxes to the Ohio government. I'd say right there, that's one big reason why Grant Enfinger got demoted, but still one question remains. Christian Eckes isn't exactly a pay driver with a silver spoon shoved down his throat. In fact, his sponsors for the Daytona Road Course were Protect the Harvest and Curb Records. Both were the same sponsors on Enfinger's truck for the second race of the season at Las Vegas. So why is Grant Enfinger losing seat time to a guy who, to my knowledge, has brought no outside sponsors to the team? Look no further than Toyota. Just maybe they actually watched my video on how they screw over prospects and had a change of heart as only one can dream. If you watched that video, you know this manufacturer has a reputation of losing drivers including Joey Logano, William Byron, Daniel Suarez, and Eric Jones. While KBM was ready to toss him to the side, Toyota didn't want to give up on the 2019 ARCA champion having just completed his rookie truck season amidst a pandemic. And so needing a ride to keep Eckes, they put up an offer to pretty much bribe Thorsport away from Ford. And of course, if you're Duke and Ronda Thorson, you do not pass up this deal to join a competitive team offering a lot of money, especially after a year of economic hardship. It would not surprise me one bit if that was the sole reason that Thorsport switched to Toyota. Either that or Toyota got leverage to get Ekus into a Thorsport truck as part of the reunion. When the pandemic hit, there was no way a fifth truck was possible, nor was eating seat time from Kraft and Sauter or Rhodes, who, for the most part, all have a fully funded racing season this year. And therefore, all that is why Grant Enfinger was officially eliminated from championship contention by not starting last Friday. He, like many offers, suffered a cut in sponsorship thanks to the pandemic. He was also at a disadvantage being on a team that operates in one of the highest tax states for business. And for the final blow, his shot at a championship was not in the best interest for the team and manufacturer over developing a prospect. So for Grant Enfinger this season, he just has to look at every single race as a must-win situation, and he has to take advantage of every single opportunity he did to get to this point. He doesn't have his crew chief anymore, but he hasn't forgotten how to drive a truck. If he can get corporate America to recommit in a post-pandemic world, just maybe his prime and trucks can get rekindled. So anyways, this is NRF signing out, and just remember, life's a beach, and then you drive.